Today I want to show you a really cool trick I use for mocking up websites or mobile app designs. For this trick, I use Keynote. Keynote is a great tool for mocking up different states of a flow. It has an animation preset called Magic Move, which is really useful. With Magic Move, you can create different states of a design, and then Keynote will create animations between those states like magic. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Magic Move and Keynote to mock up a parallax effect on a website. Just a disclaimer, this is not a prototype since you cannot really interact with it. This works more as a presentation. So that's it, let's get started. Let's start with a basic example so we can understand how we can use Magic Move on Keynote. So I have here a demo of two screens, one where it has a title, a text, and then one where it has different elements. So we have a text uh, field, and then we have an iPad and an iPhone. So three elements here. And now we want to animate them, and we want to mock up an animation when you scroll, a scroll-based animation. So uh, let's first, to the slides, we're going to apply magic move. So we select them, and then we go to animate, and then we add an effect, and we select magic move. And then we can change the duration here, probably around one second should be good. You can play around with it. And then here on the options, you want to say by object and fade unmatch objects. So here, if I press play, then I press and then it appears. It just like fades in, fades out. So there's nothing really magically moving because the elements that are here are not also here. The magic move of magic move uh, makes when an element is in both places, then it creates a transition between them. So it creates from that is here on the corner and then the different state and a different slide if it's over here, then it creates this, that transition between those two. So let's actually do that. And to do that, I'm actually going to copy these elements going to copy them and I'm going to go back to my first one and I'm going to paste them. By pasting them, now I can move them and, and say what is the starting state of these elements. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to put them outside. By putting them outside, now if I press play, now it will create that scrolling animation. But if we want it to be parallax, then all we have to do is just change the Y position of these elements. So for example, these two, I'm going to actually drag them a little bit more and this one even a little bit more. That way it will create uh, an effect of each element. It appears like it's in a different speed or it's in a different uh, depth. So let's actually preview this. Let's press play. And now it creates that really subtle effect of like some of the elements are a little bit slower or appear that are a little bit closer. We can actually zoom out, go back, and if we want it to be less subtle, then all we have to do is just like move them in the Y position even more, further, further more. And if we want to make the iPhone to look appear a little bit closer, then we have to make it look super fast into it. And to achieve that, we actually just have to move it way, way far down in the Y position. So let's press play again. And there you go. So now we have, a, it, it's not as subtle as before. It's a little bit more obvious that when you scroll, that happens. Something else that is going on is that the first text, which was scroll-based animations, this one, is just fading out. So you see, it just fades out and then the other elements appear. So we actually want it to be, also look like it's a scrolling, right? So we have to go back here, copy this and do the same but in the opposite direction. So this one actually goes out of the screen. So this is my starting point, And here I'm actually editing the exit of the exit state of this element. So now if we press play, oops, sorry. Let's go back to the first slide, press play. Oh, sorry, I have to select the first slide and then press play and then there you go. Now it looks like it's scrolling because that element is also uh, exiting the screen and the other elements are entering the screen. So that's pretty much it. 
that's you can apply this uh, same principle to all your elements in your website. Uh, now we're going to go through uh, through a demo of an actual website that I was working on. It, it was a mock-up of a website that we're working on, Carbon Health, uh, at my startup, and. I'm going to show you how I accomplished one of the mockups. It wasn't the final version of it, but it's a, it's a good starting. It was a good starting point to get us to understand how we wanted all those scroll-based animations to look like. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is transfer my sketch file. I'm going to go back here. This is the sketch file, and I'm going to just copy and paste every element into. Uh, Keynote. And the cool thing is that I can just select any of these elements, even if it's an image. Let me just turn off this. Even if it is an image, I can just let me create a new slide here. I can just paste it. And Keynote is really good at just like putting this as a PNG. Now it's an image. It even uh, copies the shadow, everything. As long as you uh, copy the individual elements that you want to animate, then Keynote will do a really good job at just putting them here. Uh, I can just, for example, all this, paste it, and now I have this, this text, paste it, copy it and paste it, and then it. And I still have to arrange it here on Keynote. I wish there was a plugin that actually just exported everything to Keynote, probably in different slides or something. But at the end, you, I don't know, it's a little bit of work, it's just copying and pasting and rearranging them. Again, this is just a mock-up that gives you uh, just an idea of how your animations could look, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Something that I forgot to tell you is that on Keynote, you want your, let's create a new file. When you're preparing your file, uh, I'm going to select the default white on the white version. I'm going to choose it. And then here, you can actually change the size of your artboard, uh, your document. Here, you go to the slide size, and then it, here it has a a, a, a default size. I don't really know what the size is, but you can go to custom slide size. And well, apparently it's 1920. For mine, I'm actually going to change it to 1640 by 18 by 960 or yeah, 960. Whatever your design you want it to look like, you just change it here. And then now you're ready to copy paste your elements from Sketch. Okay, let's just speed up this. Okay, so now I finished copying and pasting everything from Sketch into Keynote. By the way, the Sketch file is also available for download on a link below. So just click on that link and you'll get this if you want to follow along. Uh, also, the Keynote file is there if you want to see the finished product. So we have here our elements. Everything is here from the Sketch file. Uh, just made one slide per section. So the first section, which is the hero, is one slide. This section is like the second section on the website is another slide and so on. So over here, you're going to see each slide is one of the sections. Uh, and usually websites will have stuff like that, where it's like a block, uh, a section where it's talking about something. So if you want to mock up uh, your website using Keynote, you want to think in that way. So Okay, so we have all of this. Now we want to apply magic move to all of your slides. So I select all of the slides and I'm going to apply animate, add an effect, and I'm going to select magic move. And I'm going to keep it at around one, 125. And that's it, ease in and ease out. That's great. And then on transition, you can also set it automatically if you just want it to move automatically uh, with a delay. But for us, let's just put it on click so we can actually control it. So we have that, everything is set, and that's it. So now if I press play, it would just fading, fade out between the screens because nothing is repeated. So there's no really magic move happening. It's just fading in all the elements. So to actually make the magic move happen, 
then we have to actually copy and paste all the elements from each slide into the next one and the previous one and so on. So for example, let's actually uh, say how these elements are going to animate when you scroll out. So I'm going to copy them and I'm going to go to my next slide and I'm going to paste them. And now that I'm here, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and then I'm going to move them out. There you go. Move them out. I'm going to put them to the back. That way they are behind these elements. There you go. Around there. So something that you will notice is that I also put a white background, this element, on top of my elements of these uh, these little guys. Because I want to create an animation uh, on top of them and instead of masking them, I just put that overlay of white uh, where and now I can move the elements and not fear that suddenly they will uh, appear somewhere. It, this is just going to block its movements it, from view. So over here, now to create the parallax effect, all I have to do is change the Y position so it's a little bit uh, a little bit slower than everything else. So I'm actually going to move them like this. And then if you want to appear, to make, make it appear like the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the iPhone in the middle, it actually appears a little bit closer to you. Then you actually move it a little bit more like this. That way it looks like it didn't move as much, that it was a little bit further, like it was further away actually. So, and these ones, I can actually even rotate them if I wanted to. I'm going to rotate them just so it looks like it's rotating. Uh, I'm going to rotate them just a little bit, three degrees, four degrees in one side, and then negative four degrees on the other side. There you go. And now let's press play and see the magic happening. <laughs> Oops, I have to go to the previous slide and then press play. Okay, let's see how it happens. And there you go. It was pretty simple, but it works. Uh, uh, you can just like fine tune every little detail if you want to. Uh, for example, I can, I'm going to say that probably these elements move. Uh, no, you, you know, I actually like that this one is a little bit faster. So I'm going to actually put it that even like it's on top of the elements and these probably they're further away. So I'm going to make them to look they move a little bit slower. So if we, Press play, I think now. Now it, it does that. All of these is something that you can also recreate in other animation tools like Principal or Flinto. Uh, but here it's just to make it really quickly. Uh, and, and just like using Keynote, like to make a movie super quickly. It's just another way of doing this. Uh, so now uh, I have to do I have to actually copy these elements and put them in the previous screen so I can animate how they're going to get in the screen. So I'm going to copy these, I'm going to go to my previous screen and then move them outside. Now that they're outside, I can change the Y position of them, just like that. I'm going to make this one move a little bit faster because it's probably a little bit closer to you. So I'm going to make it a little bit faster, just like that, way, way faster. And now let's press play and see how it animates. There you go. That's pretty cool, right? That, that's why it's called Magic Move, because it just connects the elements that are repeated and just creates a transition between them. So I'm going to do this, copy, I'm going to go to the next one, paste, and it just move it outside. And then I'm going to move it at different speeds, at different rates. So this one, the one that is closer to you moves a little bit faster. So it's obviously a little bit further away. To zoom out, by the way, you pinch and zoom and, and you use pinch gesture to zoom in and zoom out. That's what I'm doing to zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so th that is there. And now I want to actually copy these elements and see how they enter the screen. So I'm going to paste them here. And this is going to be pretty fun because it's three elements, it's three cards. So I can say that probably these elements are a little bit closer to you, so they have to move a little bit faster, right? So I'm going to move them even further away, just like that. So now let's press play and test this. So the elements exit the screen and then these elements just enter the screen. Something that happened here is that the background just faded in. So what I have, what I can do is also copy the background and make it look like it's uh, 
moving with the background. So I copy it here, I paste it over here, and then I put it just behind everything. I'm going to move it to the back, and now the background should also move instead of just fading in. If you like fading in, you can do that too. There you go. So now the element, the background just moved in. Okay, so now I'm going to just fast forward everything so you don't have to see this. It's just the same principle. Copy and paste from one place to another and just move the elements in the Y position and then creates this parallax effect. And then I'm going to stop it to see the final effect, okay? Okay, so now I'm ready. I copied and pasted everything from the sketch file and I also copied and pasted from the different slides to uh, mimic how the elements are going to exit and enter the screen. So, if you see here, I see the elements here uh, are here, I have the, the previous slide and the next slide here. I have the previous slide and the next slide here and the same here and the same here. So let's press play and see it. So you just go, really nice parallax effect. The next slide, all the cards appear at different speeds and then they exit at different speeds. The iPad and the iPhone and the text, they all have different speeds. It looks like it has like different depth. Some of the elements appear closer to you. And then at the end, just the CTA. It looks like the CTA, I didn't copy and paste it, the actual element. So apparently I have to copy this background, paste it here, and then put it all the way to the top and then send it to the back. And now, instead of the background fading out, it should move. There you go. So that's it. It's really simple. It's, uh, it's, it's great for small things. I wouldn't create a really complex thing with this. I mean, for that, I will probably invest my time on an actual prototype. Uh, this is, again, this is just when you want to put something quickly together and just want to show uh, your teammates or anyone just like how something could look, like an, a scroll-based animation could look. And you can use the same principle, bat magic move, not just for the parallax effects, but you can also say like for different states of a button, of uh, uh, elements that appear, that appear from the right or from the left or whatever, whatever you want, just using magic move will create that animation for you. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Something else that I didn't tell you is that you can also export this as a movie. So you can go to file and then export to QuickTime. And then you can say, uh, you can say 1080p or 720, whatever uh, the resolution you want. Uh, you can also use, use custom. And then you can say, what is the, uh, uh, after each transition, how many seconds do you want it to wait? And then it will make the video with that. So we usually do like two seconds after each slide. And then you can also build, I usually set it at zero seconds. So it just goes fast. And that's it. And self-playing, yeah, because it's a video, right? And then you just export it and then exports this as a video. So that's an, a nice trick when you just want to share your prototype with someone else, your mock-up with someone else. So that's it. I hope you find this useful. Uh, Keynote is free, so that's actually pretty good too. You don't have to buy anything else for this. And that's it. Thank you so much. Have a good one.